Okay, I recently did an engineer task video on demolitions knots for priming explosives, such as your bulk explosive block, C4 TNT, and also Bangalore torpedoes. And it occurred to me I should do a video on heavy demo. Heavy demo is typically your specialty charges for specialty tasks, such as road crater, which is the heavy demo we're going to cover this time. There are two types of charges that are used when doing road craters. We have 40 pound shape charges, which I have a drawing of one here, and 40 pound cratering charges, which I have a training aid here set up. Now, when you get your 40 pound shape charge, comes inside a wooden crate. Inside that crate you have the stand and the charge itself. Now, inside the crate, the stand is over the top of the charge and it looks like it's a cage. You take it out of the crate using the canvas strap, pick it up and out of the crate, take the stand off, put the stand down on the ground, loosen up the little uh, wing nut type screw that's on it, put your 40 pound shape charge onto the stand, tighten on that screw, and that charge is set up for you to take out onto the mission. Now, when you get out there for doing the mission, you're on the site where the road crater is going to go in. You'll have that mark on the ground which says, hey, the borehole has to go right here. Take your pre-assembled shape charge, set it directly over that mark, and you need to prime it at that time. You do not prime it before you get to the demolition site and there's very good reasons for that because there is only one approved way for setting off a shape charge and get it to work correctly and that is with a blasting cap it does not matter if that blasting cap is on the end of a piece of time fuse on the end of a piece of deck cord or is on the end of an m11 branch line or another type of MDI that has a high strength cap attached to it. But we got this sitting over the top of the mark. At that time we take the tape off the top of the, the cap well which is on the very top of the shape charge. Now the very top of the shape charge here it's going to look like a little can. That's the booster. And then underneath that, you have the shaped explosive in a giant cone, which is the bulk part of your charge. You run that blasting cap down into the cap well into the booster. It'll go down like about so. You can keep that cap in there using an M1A4 priming adapter or you can use a piece of tape. Uh, I have in the past when I had the cap attached to deck cord, I let the deck cord loose out of there but I used a couple pieces of 100 mile an hour tape or duct tape, one going this way, one going this way to hold the cap directly going in and the deck cord going straight up and out so it didn't touch the booster. Now what happens, the cap goes off, sets off the booster, the booster then sets off the explosive underneath, which currently the shape charges should be comp B. Uh, there were some that were out there that were A6 and those should be expended by this point so it should be just a comp B shape charge which is a lot safer but the booster will go off it'll set off the charge up here at the top of the cone start setting it off on the side the explosive force will start going off inward and then get focused downward to create your borehole in the ground and it does not matter if the ground is asphalt concrete or dirt or some other type of soil but you should be aware depending on the soil that you're trying to put your borehole in that determines your standoff distance from the bottom of your shape charge 
and the surface that you're trying to bore into. Softer soils, dirt and that stuff, you have a farther standoff distance. The uh, stand that comes with a 40 pound shape charge, that is meant for use in for punching holes through asphalt and concrete roadways. Now, I have seen this in the past. Idiots figure, well, I don't have a blasting cap, I'm gonna set this off some other way. No. And the most common way you see them try doing it, they try tying deck cord in a standard demo knot around the booster. If you're dumb enough to do that, what you end up doing you turn this into just a giant bulk explosive charge which will just detonate outward. It will not detonate inward, creating the jet. Now, in the hole itself, for every one foot of depth in the hole, and you do check the depth of the hole before you put your charges in, make sure you got sufficient depth. Typically, it's either a five-foot hole or a seven-foot seven hole, with the five-foot being the most common. It just depends on the type of road crater you're putting in. Find, if you want more details on it, I did a video on road crater obstacles back when this channel was brand new. It's still in there under engineer tasks. But for every one foot of hole in the ground, you need 10 pounds of explosives. So you have a five foot hole, you need your one 40 pound cratering charge and 10 pounds of additional explosive. If it's a seven foot hole, doctrinally, you toss in two cratering charges. Technically it's 80 pounds of explosive for a seven foot hole but it's easier for calculating and getting the explosive in the ground. It's faster. So, most of the work you're going to do now is typically going to be with C4 and cratering charge. So you'll need 10 pounds of C4, which is eight sticks, because they're one and a quarter pounds each, and one cratering charge. Which do you add first? I personally, in order to get better, cleaner holes, I used to put the explosive in the bulk explosive in the bottom. So I would have a bag, sandbag, with seven blocks of C4 inside, primed like it's a shape charge or satchel charge, and then you have your branch line coming out the top of the bag. Do not lower this into the hole by yanking on the deck cord. What you do, tie off some uh, 550 cord or some uh, engineer tape or green engineer tape. Tie it off around this and then lower it in that way. Keep your branch light and loose as you're putting it in there. And then, you know, sometimes your bag will just lay down on the bottom. You then run your branch line up out the hole to one side. Over the top of that, You will then put in your pre-primed cratering charge. Now to prime a 40 pound cratering charge, you need one block of explosives, at least one pound of explosives. So it can be a one pound TNT block or a single stick of C4, which is one and a quarter pounds. Prime your stick of C4 with the knots that I showed you in the previous demo knot video. You then tape it to the side of your cratering charge. Now the cratering charge itself, I'm gonna mention this, you're gonna have yellow marks on it. One spot you're gonna have a dashed yellow rectangle and that's where your block is meant to go over but it doesn't really matter where you put it on here as long as it's in the center. There is no booster inside this. It's just solid explosive inside. The contents of the 40 pound cratering charge is currently comp B or composition B. It's a lot safer 
for storage and handling than the older ones. The older ones were either A6 or ammonium nitrate. Problem with the ammonium nitrate ones, if you get a uh, gash in it, it opens it up. Ammonium nitrate is extremely hydroscopic. It just sucks the moisture right out of the air and you end up with a 40 pound canister of wet chicken shit if you get a crack in the side of the canister. That's why they replaced it with Comp B, less hydroscopic, easier to use and safer. But we primed our block. Typically what I did, I peeled the tape off, the double-sided tape, slapped it on to the side here, reinforced it with a couple batches of uh, tape here. Didn't matter if it was electrical tape or 100 mile an hour tape or duct tape. Then took the branch line, bring it up to the handle that's on top and the handle does look like this. It's just a wire bound handle. Bring it up. Pull it through. And wrap it in like that. You do not want to pull it too tight. Just like with the bag of explosives that's underneath this, you do not lower this into the hole by pulling on the deck cord. You will attach, tie on either 550 cord engineer tape or some other piece of webbing or rope onto the handle here that's what you lower into the ground while keeping this loose as you're lowering it in so that you do not put too much tension onto the explosive to pull your demo knot out of your explosive block or if you're using TNT rip that explosive block right off the side now when it's in the hole, how we were taught to do it, we would have the branch line from the bag of explosives go off to one side, branch line from the 40 pound cratering charge going off on the other. Both of those were then tied into the opposite sides of the ring main which goes around that line of charges in the ground. You then went through, pushed dirt into the hole, you tamped it gently. Well, how do you tamp it in there gently? Use your foot, if you can. So you just keep putting dirt in there, around and around and around. Once you got up to about here, that's when you start using your feet to kind of tamp it down around it and you keep adding more, adding more to the top. You get a lot cleaner holes, a lot better holes, a lot wider holes if you tamp the dirt. If you just pour it in there loose, leave it that way, it expends a considerable amount of energy just blowing the stuff out of the hole. It doesn't force as, uh, direct as much force into the soil around it. So That's the basics I can give you on the charges you need for a road cratering mission. Trying to think if there's any safety notes. Oh yes, there is one that I was going to mention. And I forgot to. On the side of the cratering charge, you're going to see a little metal plate. We don't use those anymore and haven't in decades. On that metal plate, you have one channel that goes all straight through, all the way through the plate. On the other side, you had a channel that went down and had a stop at the bottom. Well, it used to be you were supposed to run deck cord through the open channel going all the way through and you were supposed to put a knot on it and, but you were, and then use that to try to prime the cratering charge. Well, that didn't work. So then it was we ran the deck cord through the plate and we still primed it with a block on the other side. Well, we eliminated running the deck cord through the clamp. Now, if you're wondering what that closed channel was on a plate, that was meant for putting in a blasting cap. It is not safe to put blasting caps in the ground. 
plain and simple. That is a major rule in demol demolitions. Well, why is that security guy? Because what if you have a misfire and you have to dig down to the charge and find out what went wrong? You want to take a guess what's going to happen as you're feeding out the dirt, especially with a shovel, and you hit that blasting cap, what can occur? So they changed the rules. They said no more blasting caps on cratering charges. So ignore that metal plate on the side. Doesn't matter. Completely useless. You just need that uh, mark where you're supposed to put the one block of explosives. And there you go. Engineer task, some heavy demolitions for you. Now remember, this is primarily meant for people that are trained and authorized to use explosives like people in the U.S. military. I got to throw that in there. I got, and uh, if you are dumb enough to try doing this stuff in real life, with real explosives, you're not authorized, you're not trained to do it, you're not licensed to do it, you very likely will screw something up and get hurt and you will get caught and go to prison once you get out of the hospital. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia Movements, always remember SAONs.